Hey guys, this is Jemmy. Welcome to this, the 44th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. And I really, really am excited that uh, to ha- see the podcast growing and see so many people starting to really listen and get in on my message about just how I interview people who are pursuing their, pa- their passions um, to not only just expose South Florida for all the talents that it has here, but to also inspire others to pursue their dreams and get into whether it's full time or hobby, um, whatever it is, just feed your soul and your passion and follow a dream and and leave lead a little bit more of a happy life. Um, and so it's a South Florida based arts entertainment and media podcast, and I hope you follow uh, at uh, Curve the Cube. That's how it is on pretty much all the interwebs, <laughs> social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, Curve the Cube, look that up and start to follow and uh, like some stuff and if you're on the YouTube, uh, write some comments because that's how uh, we keep going in the rankings so that's really, really important and on this episode uh, we have a friend of mine named Justin Fox Hall who I've had the pleasure of watching him grow up really and uh, to see him pursuing his dream right now is just so inspirational, I'm so proud of him he just landed two major lead roles in uh, awesome musicals down here d- done by the Broward Center for, for, for the Performing Arts. Um, they're both being put on, I believe they're both being put on by the uh, Slow Burn production company. And it's Big Fish and also Heathers. So he's landed the lead in both and I'm so unbelievably proud of him. Uh, you can find more information on these two shows by going to BrowardCenter.org and uh, checking them out. And um, this episode is sponsored by Soul Experiences. Uh, Soul Experiences is a South Florida based company that is aimed at giving you a really great social experience here in Florida at a little bit less of the price that Florida tends to to, 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 to cost. So uh, go follow Soul Experiences on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Watch out for any upcoming events. They do, she does uh, all kinds of things like pub crawls, and, and she just finds ways to give you those extra pieces of fun in Florida at a discount. So um, yeah, go check her out. And enjoy this, the 44th episode of Curve the Cube with Justin Fox Hall, uh, lead of the upcoming Big Fish the Musical and Heather's the Musical. Enjoy Curve the Cube will now initiate. Hey. Hi! What's up? How oh, are you? Great, how are you? Oh, good. good to see you. I always forget how tall you are every oh. time I see you. <laughs> you grow. You're still growing, I think. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Everybody says. Aww, how how are you? your home? Thank you. Welcome, welcome. I got you water. I see you have your coffee, oh, but I did yeah. get you water in case you're thirsty. Tea. So please make yourself Thank comfortable. You. I know. Oh, you didn't have to take off your shoes. You're so funny. It's a Russian thing. I'm not Russian. But... <laughs> That's what some guy told me. So is it? <laughs> How's everything going? It's going really well. Good. It's going good. Really well. Yeah. So I'm so excited to talk to you. I mean, we got so many things to talk about. I'm really, yeah, really stoked for you. Jeez, because you and I go way back. Um, Many, many, many years. So. Many moons. Yeah, many yeah. moons. And I'm really, really proud of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I was, um, I wanted to read and share with our listeners a quote from your Facebook page. Okay, cool. It says, every morning you have a choice. You can stay in bed with your dreams or drink coffee and chase them. Mm. I love that. It sounds like you're having yeah. a good time chasing your dreams. I am, and I actually I read that when I was living in New York. It was outside of a like a little hipster coffee shop. Yeah, and I thought it was so cool. It was like one of those chalkboard signs. Yeah. So yeah, wow, yeah. did some digging. That's I know. A while ago. <laughs> Jeez. I do my prep. <laughs> but yes, I'm I'm true on that. You know, I'd wake up, get coffee, and go on with my day. Yeah. It's, do you yeah. do you try to think of that mindset every day and just trying to live and pursue um, your dream? Because you're so, it seems yeah. like you can't accomplish what you're accomplishing right now without being motivated. It's it's a big picture thing for sure. Some yeah. days are tough when yeah. in this field to get up and just keep seeing that. But uh, right, you know, I just kind of go into it with the overall. This is kind of where I want to be. Career is kind of one of those ones that. It can go either way. It mm-hmm. can go very quickly in one direction, and it takes sometimes a long time to go mm-hmm. um, to get where you want to go. So I just keep a big picture, and I love that quote. You mm-hmm. 
know. It's a great one. Yeah. What are your, what are your goals? What do you what do you dream? Um, about? it's funny. This uh, my girlfriend just asked me this the other day. What I want to be uh, doing. Sorry, ladies. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's, um, it's, it's really hard. It's not, I'm, I'm a, like what I would consider a renaissance kind of performer. I do singing, songwriting. Um, I really have a passion for singing jazz, like Sinatra mm -hmm. stuff. And then I also really, really love to act. And, um, it's hard to find a medium for all of those. So I just... I keep it really open-minded yeah. with where I want to be. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put too much of a label on myself in one of those fields, mm -hmm. and then I won't be able to enjoy pursuing all of them. Right. Which also is, uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It kind of holds me back because, you know, I could just cut the waters and just pick one and, and go with it and probably get faster to one destination. Mm -hmm. But I like to, I don't know, I like to swim with all three. Yeah, and you never know, like, which road is going to pop first and right. all of that and also right. i think if you're that passionate about different things like i think there'll be a part of you that would always still want to pursue the other one a little bit absolutely absolutely yeah. i just try and be versatile yeah you know yeah it's because i always known you to be a performer you know, a singer mm -hmm. primarily is yeah. how i've known you and so when i heard about you landing these two roles, I was like, wait, what? I always got whiplash. I was like, what? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't even I did know too. that it was that you had all of that in you. So mm -hmm. tell everybody about what these roles are that you have coming. I'm so excited um, for you. Yeah, I got I got cast <laughs> in. I'm, I'm really excited too. I can't believe it. I, I got cast in um, two two leads. The first is in Big Fish the Musical, which mm -hmm. is coming um, to Broward Center of the Performing Arts. Leads, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to make sure everybody caught that two leads. Go it's, ahead. It's, <laughs> it's a big deal for me. These are yeah. both, um, the, the Big Fish part especially is the probably the biggest role that's been offered to me professionally since I graduated college. For people who are more familiar with the the screen adaptation, is that the is that the Ewan McGregor role? No, it would be his son. Okay, okay, role. okay. Gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, the guy playing my father is awesome for what I from what I understand. I've met him. I read with him actually in the auditions. He mm -hmm. was precast. I, I know that he works with the theater before, um, but you know I kind of. I, when I was reading with him, you know, I didn't really realize that he was going to be playing the part, and he even kind of looks like me. It's weird. Are you serious? Yeah, so, so I came funny. in, and people that I had done a show with down in Miami when I was in the audition, they were like, oh, you must be, you must be reading for Will. And I was like, just oh, I don't know. I just came for, like, it was just the standard auditions for several, their whole season of shows, and I don't know Big Fish the musical. I know mm -hmm. I saw the movie a while ago, and... Um, they, you know, everybody was like, oh yeah, you'd be great in that role. And oh yeah, I bet you're reading for that. And you even look like the guy that's playing your father in it. That's was so like, funny. Weird. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, an intense, intense audition process as always. Yeah. Um, uh, but it also landed me Heather's, the musical. So that all came from the same process. The same, the same audition process. It was different callbacks for mm -hmm. that, but this theater, along with a lot of the professional theaters down here, they work really quickly and they like to... As I would imagine, the director would like to know what he's working with before he gets his hands in it and mm -hmm. starts doing the work himself. So they like to cast ahead of time, mm -hmm. which if they can, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes mm -hmm. things happen. Like in this show, um, the the one the girl playing my mother, in it she was recast because she was. Well, I mean, she's married and is has a kid on the way, which mm -hmm. is awesome. So she has she congratulations, but obviously congratulations, but to, she yeah, she had yeah. to be re, uh, had have a replacement filled in, and then uh, we just lost the guy playing Don Price. So a new guy just came in. He got the other guy got a different contract, mm -hmm. which was uh, for Disney or something like that, which is really cool. Right, but right. that that kind of stuff happens a lot. So the directors would prefer, you know, to have st some stuff set in stone. So that Locked in. Because it's a lot. Right when you start rehearsals, you are, you're off to the race. I mean, you've got three weeks with six days a week about, uh, I mean, we rehearse six to ten. So, you know, it's, it's, you six don't Six days a week? Six days a week. Tuesday through Sunday is my rehearsal schedule and I go 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. It's really oh. not that, it's not that much. That and sounds like a lot to me. It sounds like a lot. It happens it really fast. It's, yeah, it's just, you know, I like to try and be on my lines and everything when I, the first day of rehearsal so that that's not something that I'm concerned about right, right. when I go in. Because right. that just is, especially with a big role, I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing and then only have to focus on whatever choreography is being thrown at me yeah. or 
whatever blocking, you know, yeah. the stage direction that the director, what I'd really like to focus on what the director wants out of the role as right, opposed right. to me getting my lines so right. So you're trying to take as much as you can and make it as fluid as you can as before whatever's in I your hand before you get in yeah, there. Yeah, before I walk in the door. It's really, really super professional. And that's sure. what, that's what, um, I, the school that I went to um, was basically trained me to do a lot of that kind of stuff. They, they want you to be... You know, they, they want the director so the, to really like you. You mean the Boston Conservatory? You mean Dreyfus? Or uh, Boston, Boston Conservatory. Dreyfus, Boston Dreyfus was great. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed Dreyfus. Um, that kind of got my foot in the door and into the music theater realm. Um, but Boston Conservatory was really where I learned how to hone my skills. And, yeah. You know, they kind of, it's kind of like a, it's such an intense program. I would compare it to like a boot camp. Um, like for the military, they kind of break you down back to normal. <laughs> right, right, like right, right, right. Whatever you came to that school knowing, they want you to keep the good stuff, but they still just kind of put you back to a clean slate and then build you back up. Interesting. Yeah, what were some of the biggest things that you learned and took from that um, experience? Honestly, it's it's funny how because you get a different acting teacher all four years, and it's such a small program. You're dealing with uh, sixty. 60 kids, which was a big class for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was the biggest class that we'd had. And then they do a cut program sophomore year, so if they don't feel like you're up to snuff. Wow, that's you. a lot of you pressure. Have to, you have to re-audition for the school, and because it's a conservatory and not a regular college, none of your, the only credits that really transfer, unless you're going to another conservatory, mm -hmm. which it wouldn't even be that many credits. You might get a music theater class here or a vocal lesson class here. You only get a liberal arts transfer at any other college, so you just kind of blew yeah, a lot of money. It's expensive. Off to make sure you don't end up in that situation. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's nerve wracking. It, it's called promotionals, and uh, sophomore year, your first semester, you re audition, and if they give you a leeway to second semester, if they, and they'll let you re re audition if you didn't do so hard. Kind of in between. Yeah, so luckily I passed first one, which was good because I had no friends. I've it's really sad. Oh my god! Yeah, I've seen people go. And we got we went down to forty around forty five. That is a big so we cut. Like, yeah, it's a huge cut. It's it's because they we I mean the school has such a reputation. I didn't actually realize this until I left the school. The whole time they talked about it, our school has a big name. Don't mess our name up. Mm -hmm, Please don't mm -hmm. go out to auditions. Please, like if you go out to auditions, don't talk to people in the room. Just mind your own business. Do your thing, you show up, be professional, do your work, and go home. Mm -hmm. They were like, don't talk about the director, don't talk about anything on the subway ride home. Hmm. They were like, you never know who's around, you never know who's part of the show in any way. Interesting. And like, they just kind of really made you, just, it, not, I don't want to say a robot, I mean, they, they really trained me, but like, just a professional. They want you to maintain you know. their brand as much as they want to build you up. <laughs> exactly. They, they, yeah, it was, it was really important to them. And, yeah. you know, when I... When I would go and audition in the city or in, in here even, it was really, it came to light when I would came back to Florida and started auditioning for professional theater down here, you know, people don't know me mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I've been gone for eight years, went to mm -hmm. school for four and then moved to New York for four. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really known down here. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, a theater like Slow Burn Theater and Patrick Fitzwater, my director, mm -hmm. to see me, I mean, the first thing that he's looking at on the resume is where I went to school. And mm -hmm. if he sees Boston Conservatory, that helps him know, like, Interesting. he's he's good. Right. Like, he, he can give me a seal of approval. Yeah, for someone he automatically is paying a little bit more attention to me because of the yeah. name. Which sounds like, you know, kind of... No, but it make, I get it. Yeah, I didn't realize... It's, it's the same reason why people aim to go to, you know, a top 10 law school or a top 10 medical exactly. school or, you know... Exactly, exactly. And, makes yeah. Sense. It, makes sense. It, 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 yeah, even people, you know, I've been out and at about, and I've been talking to people, and people surprise me sometimes. People that don't know, don't know anything about theater or music, and they hear, oh, you, I, I just say it, you know, I'm pretty humble about it. I'm like, oh, I went to Boston Conservatory. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, Drop, oh, I didn't know it was that big of a deal. <laughs> I guess it's a big deal to you. I don't know. So if you weren't familiar with it before, how did you end up there? How did that At happen? At Boston Conservatory? Yeah. That's actually really funny. I um, I uh, had a theater dean at Dreyfus, um, Beverly Blanchett. She's an awesome actress. She is now, she doesn't, she doesn't, she's not the dean there anymore. She does local theater here as well now. But we had a trip planned to Chicago to audition for, um, colleges mm -hmm. and, and we were in high school senior year 
And they were holding, uh, I forget what hotel we stayed at, but they were holding auditions for several different colleges, mm -hmm. uh, top music theater schools in the nation. And I had never been to Chicago, and I really wanted to go, and I didn't really want to audition. I didn't... I didn't care. I, I really, I'll be honest, I, I enjoyed doing theater. It was fun. Um, but, you know, I didn't really have my heart set on it. I mm -hmm. just kind of, I was planning on going to FSU and, mm -hmm. or UF or whatever I could get into Florida school mm -hmm. and just kind of doing whatever. Yeah, I remember you had been talking about Florida school. So then when I, you know, however long later, heard through the grapevine or you came back and I here we were. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was interesting. I just, I told, you know, I signed up for the trip and put the money down. And then it was my job to go and find what schools were coming to the hotel uh -huh. and to sign up for the auditions. And it's like a week and a half before the trip. And I had zero. And we had to have like a minimum of 10. And my theater dean called me in. And I was like, Justin, what's the deal here? What are you doing? You want to help this me is out? This just a here? trip to Chicago. Yeah, and I was like, oh, you know, I just want to just go see the city. That's never, not dumb. And she's yeah. just like, dude, you got to sign up for at least a few. And I was like, oh, all right. She's like, I'll help you with your monologue, your audition material, whatever you need. And I was like, all right, well, just whatever the best ones are, just sign me up. She's like, go sign yourself up, dude. I was like, okay. <laughs> so she like just put a couple schools together on a list and I really didn't think too much about it. I auditioned blindly oh um, for Boston Conservatory. Are you serious? I went in with a, I swear, I went in with a, I actually forgot my dress shoes, which was super awkward because the monologue I had to do was Shakespeare monologue where I had to use the shoes oh, in the, so it became in the obvious. monologue. Well, the shoes were too small for me. So... <laughs> They were like real tight, so I had to take the shoe off in the middle of the monologue and then put it back on, and it got real awkward trying to put it back on because I'm like using the shoe as a prop. And yeah, it was real. It was really funny, and then um, you know I kind of fibbed even on top of it. We had a dance call um, for that. There was like a, a audition for dance for that school mm -hmm. for Boston Conservatory, and I didn't. I don't dance. I'm not a big dancer. Mm -hmm. I it never really have been. They made me do a lot there, but. I didn't have any dance clothes, yeah, so yeah. I showed up in just normal clothes, and the like, the choreographer um, was just like, what are you doing? And I was like, I lost all my clothes on the plane. It didn't get, my luggage didn't come, just making up excuses, and it was real awkward when I got accepted and I went there because... Hey, hey, improvisation is performance, you know? Yeah, but it, it haunted me for four years. Michelle Chasse, who did the auditions, who was the main choreographer of Boston Conservatory, would be like... I remember when you lost all your clothes, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was right. awful. <laughs> so weird <laughs> it was oh, how that happened. But yeah, I really, it, it, it was, it was funny to me, you know, I got accepted and I ended up not getting into the Florida schools that I wanted to go to. So Boston Conservatory was my only choice, and it, really. But that, that's so awesome. Right. And then I started looking into it and I found out when I got accepted, it was number two or number three in the nation it was like under wow. next to carnegie mellon and i had no idea what i was getting into wow. you know i knew it was you know good. it reminds me of this randomly it reminds me of a quote from little women hmm. where um the oldest sister meg is complaining that she'll never have any suitors right and so right. the youngest sister amy says to her you don't need scores of suitors. You just need one if it's the right one. And yeah. it sounds like Boston Conservatory was just the right one. It was, it was if the shoe fits, wear it. Yeah. Especially in my case. Right? right? <laughs> Even if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't you'll fit. make it fit. I'll make it fit. Did you at least have good shoes for the dance part? No, I didn't have any <laughs> shoes for the dance part, actually. I just went barefoot in, like, dress pants. It was super awkward and uncomfortable. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's a Hysterical. Yeah, it's funny. It's oh funny. my gosh! So let's rewind a bit. Yeah. What were you? What were you like as a kid? When did you realize that? You know, whether it sounds like you kind of start off with the singing. When did you realize you like to get down and sing and do that kind of stuff? Where did that come from? I, uh, you know, I always kind of, I guess, sang to myself as a kid when I was growing up. I always enjoyed. Yeah. Um, I remember at the South Florida Fair years and years and years ago when I was a kid. Um, there was this guy who played like a three-layered organ. It was huge pipes, and he was 
a comedian. He was really funny. His name was John Bressler. Mm -hmm. And I was like obsessed with the guy playing mm -hmm. piano and singing these funny songs. And he had this whole like kind of quirky act that went with it. And really entertaining. Stage rotated and he was all what? like playing the keys. At the his, fair? At his, yeah, years ago. Wow. John Bressler. I got all this stuff on um, old cassette tapes. Oh. So, yeah, old school. <laughs> but I would like listen to him and like sing along and jam. And then I remember there was some talent show at school or variety show and I sang something real embarrassing I can't remember but you know I kept kind of testing the waters and my grandmother actually got me into it through she loved to go up and we have a, a property up in North Carolina in the mountains is this the same grandma you cooked dinner for yes this you is the same it. grandma that I just cooked dinner for I love <laughs> um she would take me to go um, with her friends to go sing karaoke. It's like a big thing in the mountains. Oh, please. And it's a big thing in my own world. Yeah. I love karaoke. It, it like was really blowing so up. So much fun. I love karaoke. Ah, yeah, I'm a karaoke star. Ah. Yeah, we'll definitely go. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, she kind of like nudged me and was like, dude, get up there. Go sing something. I know you like to sing. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to go sing kind of deal. She's like, just whatever you want to sing. And yeah. I, so I sang, it was like, a, it's an older crowd too. So I sang like Backstreet Boys or something. <laughs> so, so ridiculous. You hadn't found your Sinatra no, voice No, it yet. just, it, this is, yeah, and this is how I did. It just, the Backstreet Boys thing didn't hit it well. I could tell the audience didn't like it. I wonder that, why. That, well, that, it was the first time that like my grandmother <laughs> looked, yeah, I know. They weren't into boy bands. <laughs> but she... She was like, Justin, you need to you need to sing something that they want to hear. Think about your audience who you're singing to. She was kind of like a little bit of a yeah, stage mom. coaching a little bit. You there know? you go. She, she, she saw it. Yeah, so she gave me some Dean Martin albums, Frank Sinatra albums. It was July, I remember. Had you really been exposed to that before? No. Not? Wow. And um, it was July, and they had, on one of the radio stations, they were doing Christmas in July. Mm -hmm. So they played some Christmas songs, and um, Jingle Bell Rock... I, seriously, that is my favorite Christmas yes, song. Yes, one of mine too. My favorite. It's um, and that's what I chose to come back and sing the next week. I kind of practiced it, imitated Bobby Helms, and came back and sang Jingle Bell Rock, and I got a better response. Oh my gosh! And that's actually what I auditioned for with Dreyfus. Oh really? When I auditioned for Dreyfus um, in high school, yeah. I, they need they wanted a monologue and they wanted a song. So I didn't have a monologue. I did uh, The Road Less Traveled, a Robert Frost poem. Mm -hmm. Recited that. Um, it's a great one. And then did I just sang a, along to a karaoke track, Jingle Bell Rock. Mm. And they, got, they thought it was good enough, so they, they let me in. But um, yeah, you know, after... Good grandma. She laid some yeah, good she, seats for you. She, she hooked it up, you know. <laughs> she hooked it up. So yeah, that's how I really kind of got into singing. I mean, I did chorus in middle school. With uh, with uh, St. Joseph's mm -hmm. and um, did some of the pageants and stuff like that, but yeah. I really didn't get into it into it until I got into high school with yeah. Dreyfus. Yeah, yeah. Tell do, do a quick byline of what Dreyfus is for so because you know m most of my audience is local and I like it that way. I right. like to expose a lot of local talent. And so for anybody who is a kid or has a kid that is showing some potential or some drive, I think I mean Dreyfus seems to be one of the main. I, a really great foundation. I'd highly recommend it. Um, I really had a good Dreyfus experience, mm -hmm. in, um, you know, coming from a private school background mm -hmm. and that being my first experience with a public school. Mm -hmm. um, I just know for some people, like, public... Dreyfus is public? It is. It's a magnet program, but I it's, know it's public, so you can wear oh. regular clothes, which was really oh. cool for me, and it's kind of, you know, I people... Keep in mind for Jordan. Yeah, people... So that's been my gripe. I'm like, I, want, I would love for him to have a great education, especially one that explores his, you mm -hmm. know, you've seen him be... He oh, created yeah. a performing little self. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, but I don't want to wear any freaking uniform every day. <laughs> no. Yeah, they, I mean, it's, they, it's pretty, it's like, whatever they, you want to wear kind of deal, as long as it's appropriate. But yeah. But other yeah. than that, I mean, just everybody has a really artistic attitude. And you have, like, a major, right? At Dreyfus, yeah, you have, like, a major. A, yeah, there's communications, which is, like, media and stuff, yeah. and uh, visual arts, yeah. dance. Yeah, a lot of the kids dance. at St. Joe's have been through there, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it kind of, if you're into performing or into something, and you can switch majors, too, which is mm -hmm. the really cool part. Um, you can switch it once, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you find, like, if you're in what what's happened in the past, if you are in chorus vocal, in the vocal department and then you see all these kids in theater and you have a knack for acting you could 
probably switch. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. really pushed it. Yeah. Which it just it opens you up to other art, and I really I think the program's great. Wow. Yeah. Did that? Um, I can only imagine being in a school full of other kids that are like minded. Yes. Form some really good bonds. It's competitive. Oh, really? Yeah. It's uh, theater specifically. I mean, they also do a lot of com competitions. Um, we did state competitions and local competitions. And Dreyfus is really well known at those as well, or at least when I went there, I'm pretty sure it still is. Yeah. But they, uh, yeah, they, it's competitive for roles and stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't really, I got like a small lead in one of the shows the whole time I was there and I was, uh, Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so. What is, so coming back into the more the present, when, um, when, you, how did you, when you decide, okay, I'm going to start to go off on auditions, right? Right. What's the step one? How did you, how do you find auditions and opportunities? Um, how that work? And I've always wondered about that. You know, in in this kind of career, you're in charge of, you, you are your brand. You you basically are in charge of your career. Mm -hmm. So whatever you want to get your hands into, you go pursue it. Mm -hmm. I I've always been one of those people that kind of rides the wave and like things just kind of come across my way and I pursue those. But you gotta be a little bit more assertive in this this specific career. There's a couple websites. Um, let's see, uh, Florida. I mean, you can go to Playbill.com and they search the auditions. They have some South Florida stuff. But there's okay. there's other um, websites that you go to to get audition information. I have luckily a good interweb of theater friends. From I did a Ragtime the musical down in Miami. I was okay. part of the ensemble for that. So I met a, that was a good size cast, about forty plus. Yeah. So I met some good friends through there, and they really like me, and I like them, so they tell me when there's auditions, like yeah. Slow Burn, I got lucky, I was just having a couple drinks after the sh one of the shows down in Miami with uh, some of the people in the cast, and they were asking me, did you sign up for Slow Burn? And I said, no, what's that? And they were like, sign up right now, because the cutoff is at midnight, and it wasn't even for a couple months, the audition, so I just, just signed up right there on yeah. my phone, and... You know, the audition came up, and it's kind of, there's like an audition season mm -hmm. is really what it is, mm -hmm. and there, a that lot of... That fills out the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I was bouncing up to Maltz Jupiter Theater doing auditions there, I was going down to Miami doing auditions there, and Broward Center, you know, the, um, the Wick and, and Del Rey, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have, I mean, everybody holds their season auditions around the same time and try and fill, the theaters try and fill the slots as much as they can, mm -hmm. and then they also have regular auditions for the shows, like just before the show's about to be, to fill in, yeah, to fill in where they need it, yeah. So, so you do more of it like through networking and just hitting the pavement. You don't really have like an agent that you. No, I, I don't have an agent. Um, I'm not part of the actors union, mm -hmm. which is Equity, which is really helpful right now for where I am in my mm -hmm. career. Because mm -hmm. if I mean, once you become Equity, part of the actors union, you can't work at any theaters that aren't supporting equity contracts oh. so like I can't do community theater I don't really want to do community theater anymore I like to get paid for yeah, what yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did a lot of stuff for free in New if York. If you're not in equity can you still perform in theaters? That yes. Okay so, so not being in equity. Not being in equity you have all your doors open. Yeah. Being in equity you only have half. What's the benefit of being in equity? Is just that they so, help you? Um, well like equity members generally get paid more and also they are um, looked after a little bit more. Sometimes in theaters uh, that aren't as reputable, they have a tendency to spin your wheels a little bit, waste your time, mm -hmm. which is something as an actor that's really super annoying. Of course, you, you get know? your hopes up or something. Well, it's just, it's not even that. You go, you go to do um, rehearsal, and you know it says that you're called for whatever scene, and then they might not even get to your scene that day which yeah. is super frustrating that you're sitting there for five, six hours not being used when your time is precious. You could be exactly. doing something else. Who knows, a lot of actors, they double book shows. So right. they'll be in rehearsals. Um, as, an, as one show is in performances, they're, the rest of the week, they're in rehearsals for right. another show, and they establish that ahead of time so they can do both. Right. Um, but, the, but equity kind of, um, there's always called it equity sheriff or equity deputy. <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of the more <laughs> sorry this sounds really I know, funny. It's funny. <laughs> but they uh, it's one of the people that's a little bit more established in the equity um, union in one of the shows, and they will be in charge of monitoring time, making sure the actors go on 
breaks when they should. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, directors are in it and they really want to see the product get, get to where they want to see it, but they forget that we need to eat, we mm -hmm. need to go to the bathroom, we need to do things. So every 45 minutes, it's supposed to get a little break, you know, and uh, you got to have the lunch at this time, dinner at this time. So that gotcha. guy has to speak up and be like, hey, or um, you can't have people taking pictures of you if you're equity. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Can't have pictures backstage, and the equity oh. deputy has got to be like, "Hey, put your camera Every away." Every time you say that, I think it's yeah. a giggle. <laughs> you can't, you can't be doing that. Um, yeah, the last show I did, we had a really strict uh, equity deputy. He was, he was on it all the time. So, um, yeah, the, it's it's beneficial, especially if you are one of the actors that likes to go fly up to New York City mm -hmm. for their audition season, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's super helpful to be equity up there. Do you think you're ever going to ba go back to New York? Um, I <laughs> I liked New York, I guess. I, I really didn't like New York, actually, at all. <laughs> um, what I, were you doing up there? How long were you there? I was there for, four I gave it something? four years. Yeah. I really gave it the, the good old college try. Yeah, um, I yeah. moved there straight from college, and it. I'd like to say I auditioned as much as I should have, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I um, I actually played a lot of um, singer-songwriter gigs when I was in New York. Oh. I was really into that. Um, I had just finished uh, Boston Conservatory. I had made this um, songwriting class at this conservatory that they still have today. Really? Yeah. High five. Yeah, I know. Good and, job. Um, my senior year, you pick an emphasis, and you can pick up to like three emphases, and so I picked acting singing and I didn't want to do dance. I really didn't want to do any more ballet, no more tap, no more jazz. Oh my none. gosh, I wish I could have seen you do oh, ballet. Oh yeah, those tights. I was good looking. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Woo. Um, but I I was talking to my the guy who does the music theory, this guy Kevin Siegfried, he's an amazing teacher and mm -hmm. he was really into me writing my personal music. And Berkeley College of Music was right next door where Mr. Charles Milling. Yes, is. yes. Previous podcast. Yes. Come on, listeners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I wanted to put a band together and put on some of like wor learn to work with a band with my own original music. So this teacher of mine, Kevin Siegfried, helped me create this emphasis, this class where he he actually created a little bit of the structure along with myself. We mm -hmm. made the class together and it was just, you know, teaching me the basics of songwriting and taking what I've already have, uh, giving it space to breathe when you have instrumentalists right. come in. Right, thinking about it from a full band yeah. perspective. Yeah, and it was really cool. And I had like um, players from Berkeley um, assist me in like a final concert. So when I left oh. the conservatory, I was not only really into, um, like we, we went over and did a showcase in New York for theater, where a bunch of agents came and watched us and kind For a of second, I thought you said all <laughs> Asians? <laughs> no, it, yes, yes. No, like... Okay, that's random? No, like uh, promoters and whatnot, you know. They, um... They came and watched us and... Turning my hearing aid off. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, I was really into singing and songwriting singing and songwriting and I wanted to try that in New York I figured you know that's a pretty big city there's got to be a lot of venues for it and there were mm -hmm. the thing that I found is a lot of them wanted you to play for free mm -hmm. it's for because exposure. they have probably have so many people that are just hungry for it well they just say like somewhere. you know it's good exposure and what I found was you know I was just basically play, playing for a bar tab yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. And um, it wasn't really getting me. There was not a lot of people that would ever come up and talk to me about my music. Mm. And what I found a lot, which was really kind of a downer, I would find um, that the musicians that were already there in the city doing exactly what I was doing, I was hoping to come across another musician that wanted to collaborate because I hadn't had a lot of experience collaborating. Yeah. And I was shot down a lot. Like, a lot of people didn't want to really? do that. They're, well, they're doing their own thing, you mm -hmm. know? And that's a big dream that people like to chase in that city, and I understand it. They don't want to, like, be veered off in a path. That's... Yeah, but collaboration, I think, opens you up. You know, right. it taps into what is already authentic about yourself and just makes it that much more flavorful, flavorful and colorful. Yeah. Seems like a missed opportunity. It, for it would, yeah. It seems like that, but then again, like if you're thinking about it, it's hard to do that in New York. Um, mm -hmm. it, you don't have a vehicle. <laughs> Getting a keyboard yeah, from one true. apartment to another. That's um, true. Who can have rehearsals in apartments yeah. or renting a rehearsal space? That's true. It's a big 
process, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why I moved out of the city. I was like, I'm tired of things being a process, mm -hmm. like to go do normal things. I was like, I can just get in my car and go to Target right. <laughs> and come back in 30 minutes instead of right. me taking four plus hours to go to Florida Target. It definitely has its freaking perks, It's man. got its perks. <laughs> yeah, plus the beach. Don't miss that. You uh -huh. know, yeah. I, so I missed good. it. Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, uh, what were we talking about? So do you play... You, do you play instruments? I do. I do. I play piano, um, and I have played a little guitar, mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was kind of just uh, acoustic. Acoustic, yeah. yeah. I, um, I bought this video game for PlayStation that was like to teach guitar rock, hero? Rocksmith, actually. Oh. <laughs> you take a real guitar, and mm -hmm. it's got a, a specific cable made for real instruments that plugs into your actual machine. Oh, really? And it teaches you, like, video game style how to play. What? It's, like, real cool. So I was, like, That's playing a badass. little bit of electric guitar. I thought it was really badass. Yeah. I was really into it, but... Um, you know, Rocksmith, kinda, you said it's Rocksmith, huh. yeah, it was really cool, yeah. I'll have to check it out. You should definitely check because that out. Because I feel a lot of pressure as someone who doesn't play guitar, um, with a son who really wants to learn, I don't know anything about, like, how to teach him anything, oh. so, like, maybe that'll help me at least get some basics. Absolutely. I feel like a complete idiot. It teaches you really well, too, in a really fun way. It's definitely yeah. geared for kids. Ah, yeah. interesting. I'm a big kid, so it's kind of geared for me, too. But. Good. Yeah. Good, good. So, yeah, so what, at what point, when you were auditioning for, at the Broward Center, yeah. at what point did the auditions kind of diverge for Big Fish and Heathers? Um, they actually, it, they did it all together for the most part. Um, we went, I mean, well, actually, no, they did. They did, a, like, let's see, I went in on, like, a Friday or something, and I did their main audition, and then they would give me sides for both, and I would go in and they would call people, like, come in and read for Big Fish, these guys call us in, we'd read for Big Fish, I'd go back out, and then I would go over my stuff for Heathers, they'd call me in for a couple reads for Heathers, and then they sent me home with um, sheet music to come back, mm -hmm. and, I mean, they didn't have me sing while I was there, a couple of things from the show, but I didn't know it really well, and so they do callbacks for that. Gotcha. You know, they'll be like, take this for a day, come back, and perform it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know I really I really wanted the part I really did I right when I started seeing the director was kind of shifting focus to me and a couple of guys and I was looking at myself I was like all right that Dreyfus competitive edge came yeah, out of you <laughs> I just I was like I can get this the other the other guy I know that, that I was auditioning up against I know he had worked at the theater before and I was like you know I can't beat myself up if I don't get the role the director doesn't know me at all and that's a big chance to take mm -hmm. on not knowing someone regardless mm -hmm. what it's if I'm from the Boston Conservatory whatever it doesn't mm -hmm, matter mm -hmm. you know he doesn't know me so that's probably why he called me back a couple more times just to, to make sure that I'm consistent yeah. you know and and when I started seeing it you know I, I memorized as much as I could mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm. songs that he wanted me to perform mm -hmm. and I was also auditioning for a couple other shows too Spring Awakening was in there mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. forget the others that were in their season um, but I was I, I had a lot that I was juggling and also trying to focus really on getting big fish mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I you know I just had a really good feeling about it the whole time but you know I keep an open mind because I've been down that road, you yeah. know, you think you got it, and, you, and then you don't. The only time I've ever had, a, like, a glimpse into what that process is like, and this is a totally terrible example, but <laughs> I just share it anyway. Um, years ago, uh, you remember how they made um, Legally Blonde into a musical? Mm-hmm. Well, I think for, like, the second season of it or something like that, they held auditions, but they made it, like, a reality competitive show. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. So that's the only, like I said, terrible example because it's completely off of what I'm sure the normal experience is. But if that's the only time I've ever gotten seen, like, how that competitive, how competitive it can be, how stressed out, how, um, how uh, the slightest, maybe one little word that that the producer or director says back to you can just play in your mind and all of that. It's I mean, a lot of mind games. Yeah. You need to keep, I, that's why um, I really, really try not to talk. When I when I go to audition, I really mind my own business. I really sit there and focus. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the time that you have in that in the in the waiting room is real valuable. When they hand you sides, which are just scenes, different mm -hmm. scenes that, you know, and you know which character you're reading for, 
there's a lot of things that you should be doing when you're reading through that. You probably only have 30 minutes with that. And right. I try and memorize a little bit or, you know, get a really good, just a good gesture, of, of, uh, feeling of where, where I want to be in that and in, scene. And in those sides, are you doing it with another, yeah, generally, someone else's Yeah, generally you'll or? read with another actor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, they won't have you read on with another actor on stage, they'll have like they'll have somebody behind the table sitting next to the director, and they'll just read the just lines, read and you're saying them back. You know, that's more. For do they the, read the lines stone, or do they? Yeah, read the lines, sometimes oh, you get tough. a really bad reader, and it's tough. Yeah. You know, I've done a couple film auditions that they do it on purpose because mm -hmm. they want to they want to see what you have. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they don't want to be listening to the person next to them read. They want to look at the actors, so they just make the reader just say the lines plain. And um, but yeah, it's it's really important. I feel, you know, because people know each other. It's really hard, like, when you've got your best friends that you've done four shows with yeah. and you're auditioning together. It's hard to not talk to them, but, right. you know, right. that's something that I'm like, hey, I love you, good to see you, but i got to go do this. Right, right. Because, you know, that's, it, that's could, it could make or break that moment, that prep moment for you when mm -hmm. they call your name. If you're talking to someone and you're not like really invested right right it right. might throw you off and you might get a nervous especially all of a sudden. because you never know when you're catching up with someone what that conversation is going to end up being about yeah. that can really throw you off yeah exactly <laughs> hey guess what <laughs> oh you looked a little different yeah what was that sex change off yeah yeah it's like okay oh, <laughs> all right oh it's me my turn i gotta go um shoot <laughs> a little bit to throw you off yeah exactly when you're studying the, the those side scripts, um, do you almost have to interpret the the roles you're not reading for as much as you're interpreting the roles you are, so that you can kind of feel what that character might be giving out, even if it's a stone reader in the moment, but what that actual character might be giving out, so that you know what you would be giving back as the as the character you're actually reading for. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you, your main goal in cold readings is to establish your relationship with who you're talking to mm -hmm. and um, really just get what know what your end game in that scene is even if you don't know the rest of the show mm -hmm. just imagine that that scene is the show and what what your end game is in that and if you don't if you can't tell really if the scene is kind of vague mm -hmm. which a lot of them can be you know mm -hmm. You just make one up, mm -hmm. you know, you just put a feeling on it. Just give a give an impulsive try. I actually focus a lot on um, the actual how how things are phrased. Um, mm. So it, it's really punctuation is what I'm after. Gotcha. I, pay, I pay a lot of attention to where commas are, periods are, semicolons. Those things are super meaningful and important because that's the writer kind of giving you clues it's, how, and you know um yeah. what's this christopher walken is mm -hmm. one of the, from what i've heard he's one of those actors <sighs> that he demands all the punctuation be taken out of the script interesting because really. he doesn't want the writer to tell him how to say the lines mm -hmm. but you know he's christopher walken he's christopher walken <laughs> christopher walken can do whatever christopher walken wants to do i don't care i'm not christopher walken <laughs> I, uh, I pay attention to punctuation. It's funny, out of the four years that I was at the conservatory, you know, every actor has their own, um, or every teacher, acting teacher, has their own way that they want you to learn. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my senior year that basically the teacher was like, scrap everything that you learned. And mm -hmm. he's like, all we're going to focus on is punctuation. And Interesting. he was a British um, teacher. So, you know, he basically, you know, you just... Uh, when it comes up to the comma, you raise your intonation, and when you come down to the period, you close off the sentence. And it's just when you really look at it that way, acting is really not that hard. Mm -hmm. It is hard. You know what it almost sounds like? Reading music. Yeah, kind of. Kind of like reading music. Mm. It, acting is like, uh, who said it? It's Chris Farley. He was, he was saying it in, um, in regards to improv, but it's one of my favorite quotes and he was saying, like, acting is kind of like driving a car while looking in the rearview mirror. Mm. You can kind of see what's coming up, but everything that you know is behind you. Yeah, that's true. So you true. really have all that to go off of. That's true. You have all of your, what you know as an actor to go off of mm -hmm. and pursue forward with a little bit of knowledge what's coming up. It was really in regards to improv, but I've taken that into Yeah, yeah, everything. yeah. I did, I did um, an improv workshop many years, I mean, gosh, probably 2005, maybe, something mm -hmm. like that, 
Um, yeah, and so it's exactly true. Like you just, you really have no idea what's coming up, and yeah. it really is. It, it. I remember how much fun it is to play with other people in a scene like that. And oh, it's great. I need to do some improv again. Dang it! Now I'm thinking about it. It's real fun. <laughs> really do it again. It's real fun. Improv always makes me nervous. I hate to. Uh, I, I like to it's something I gotta do, but I always, yeah, I yeah. You never know what what um, other muscles it might help you learn. Or mm -hmm. yeah. So. Some of the best improv I've seen too is not even comedy. It's like serious really? I've seen some improv in, in classes that has brought me to tears people like having serious situations and coming and improving off of that and you just it's like whoa I did not expect that oh to my go gosh. that way yeah you just my, you, you just brought comedy. me back the most random memory I completely forgot I literally completely forgot I took an acting class did in you college. really I just now remembered that no way <laughs> and when you said dramatic improv I'm like what the heck is that I'm like oh wait I did that <laughs> Yep. That's See? what I ever... <laughs> See? I forgot. It exists. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I totally forgot I did that. It's hilarious. So, um, when you were saying that you're, like, memorizing your lines before you go to Big Fish and, and, and start the, the rehearsals, and, yeah. and you want to be as prepared in that way as possible, how, what do you do to practice and learn your lines? How do you, what's your process for that? Um... Some actors like to have somebody read with them. Mm -hmm. um, I personally just like to become really, really familiar with the script. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've read the script, uh, I don't even know how many times I've read the script now. A lot. Um, I basically, you know, I highlight, I luckily got a script that I can have and keep for mm -hmm. my own, which mm -hmm. is cool. Does that not usually happen? Um, no, sometimes you, you got if you can't buy it, you, the director will rent, like a lot of the places they'll rent the libretto, the music score, and everything, you have to mark lightly with pencil, and then erase everything, and then return it, it's a rental thing. Jeez. Yeah, so luckily I could highlight everything, and I basically just highlight it, and um, read all my, every, everything, and then really start focusing on what scenes I have, and then I'll go back uh, with like a blank piece of paper, and put it over at the top of the paper, and then just start reading, like I read the stage directions every time, see where I come in. So you're kind of playing it in your head. Yeah, yeah. I want to see like where it's gonna go, you know, and um, and then I'll just come up to my first line or whoever says their line, and I'll try and take off if I remember what the cue is, and then I'll just say the line, and then come down and make sure I got everything in line, mm -hmm. and then read their next line, and then I kind of just look up from the page and pretend that you know that was being said to me, and I just kind of look off at wherever that right, person would right. be and. Pretend just, floating head. And yeah. I, yeah, and I, <laughs> and I say it, you know, I say it a few times, and um, if I feel that I said it in a way that was believable, that I, I would believe, or that I feel that it could be said, then I move on. Mm -hmm. And if not, then sometimes I'll get so lost in one line, in the middle of the scene, I'll just be like, oh, I'm not, this isn't, the in inflection, the intonation isn't good, I didn't like the tone that I said that in, maybe it needs this air. I'll go back up to the top and I'll just start and it's a very slow process. It takes me a while, yeah, you know, yeah. to get through. And I try and get through the script a couple times a day, um, wow. especially in crunch time. You know, the last month I've been really going through it a couple wow. times a day. And just, I'm not going to say that I'm 100% off book. I, I should be, but then again, I haven't been. It's different when you put it up on its feet and you get another person there and they're saying the lines back to you. You know, right. sometimes you get a little tongue tied. You know, you get a little nervous, you're working with the director, and yeah. he, he wants to see a couple new things that he's throwing at you that you you haven't thought of. Yeah. So. Do you think it's, if let's say you had seen Big Fish, like, the movie, like, a hundred times, you're a super mega fan, you'd seen, do you think that would have been helpful or hurtful? Um, I think that it would be a little hurtful. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's great to, to have a background, like, I even... I didn't know that it was the movie was based off a book, mm -hmm. so I recently went and picked up the book, which was super kind of. I'm glad I did. It's written from my character's perspective, which <laughs> is really awesome. Gives you a lot Gives of insight. Gives me a little bit more of an insight to him that's not shown yeah. in the movie and not shown in the the uh, yeah, okay. the show. It, it's. It, I think if you watch another actor, this is really important to you. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, if you watch another actor do. The, the same thing that you're about to do, you're definitely going to use what he's done. Kind of can't it's help just, it. Yeah. You can't help it. You're going to drag... Some, I've seen... I watched the movie a long time ago, mm -hmm. and then I auditioned for the show and then got in the show. And it, then can I be too, it can become too karaoke. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. You don't want to impersonate 
another person's work. You want to yeah. make it something. It's really just you in that character. Yeah. It's, there's no. It's not like I'm playing Will, but I'm really. I'm really not. I'm playing myself, saying lines and acting as if I were in a similar situation to Will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And people call me Will. Mm-hmm. It's not. I'm not Will. I'm not yeah. somebody new. Yeah. You know, I. It, it, some actors will be like, no, I am. Like, I, their method, and they're like, no, I, I am this person. And that's, that's cool. Everybody has their own method. There's a lot of approaches that you can take. Mm-hmm. I like to just, you know, be myself as much as I can, mm-hmm. unless there, something else is called. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you got to be a little bit a little bit off for certain parts or, you know, mm-hmm. have different edges. Mm-hmm. So I'll take a different approach. My school taught me a lot of different methods. Yeah. So sometimes I will, like, I will be, I will take, I, I did a show called Dog Sees God, which is, uh, back in college, which is a, uh, it's all the uh, Peanuts characters growing up, like, in high school. No kidding. And it's really messed up. It's like, uh, the, I played Pigpen. <laughs> Matt, who is now, he uh, is now a super clean freak. And <laughs> everything is, you know, everybody's oh, real so different. Funny. Yeah, it's really funny how everybody kind of changed. Oh Drugs got involved. All the Peanuts characters are a little bit off. Oh, little my different. gosh. There's parties and Whoever stuff. Whoever wrote that is brilliant. Yeah, it was real cool. I mean, the first <laughs> thing is, is, is Snoopy <laughs> dies, <laughs> which is like the first thing, which is real See sad. See the dog that saw God? Yeah, mm. yeah. So I, for that, you know, I... Took a, I took more of the method approach, and I, I started carrying around this Purell bottle. It's mm. like, I thought that was like, it like had the keychain on, I'd swing it around. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm mad, I'm clean, <laughs> and I'm clean. I always like to be clean, fresh and clean. And then I would like carry that around in my everyday life, and then I found like that that's how it happens with actors sometimes mm. that, you know, they get in, they get too involved, They're, they take their character home, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which can happen, mm-hmm. you know, if you become too invested. Yeah, you hear about certain people who that's how they do it. They're that person, twenty four seven until production wraps. Like yeah. I think I've heard Jim Carrey can do that. I've heard um, Heath Ledger, um, God rest his soul, used to do that, be like that. Yeah. You know, it's, so anytime you hear about someone who get, goes to that extreme, you're like, wow. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's impressive. I just don't know if I could be, like, your sister or your friend. Yeah, <laughs> you like, just don't know. Don't know. Like, I don't, like, your neighbor, all of a sudden, a joker you, walks whatever, by. You know? <laughs> you know yeah. I wouldn't work out. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's interesting, you know? So what was your what was your exposure to Heather's before you heard about that? I mean, Not, because cause I was going to say, like, I know I'm – a bit older than you and yeah. I was probably at the tail end of their of that like that sweet spot for of audience from when Heather's came out because I was a little young my brother was probably right there and sandwiched right he's a little older um, but I certainly have seen Heather's a million times since yeah. I was a kid so I know that movie almost inside out but when I heard you got it I'm thinking hmm has he even heard about it before <laughs> The, I'd only heard about it through uh, mutual <laughs> friends that had auditioned for the show in New York. Apparently it was, um, I had a buddy, I was doing several auditions with him, and he he veered off uh, part of the afternoon. He was like, I gotta go do a Heather's audition, we'll meet up for lunch. And I didn't, I was like, Heather's, what is that? He's like, I don't know, I just got, just going. So he went in and he came back and he was like, oh my god, it's hilarious, man. They had me doing these crazy songs, I was playing some high school jock. And I didn't, you know, I didn't pay much attention. And then yeah. in this lineup, I saw Heather's. I was like, oh, that's that funny show or whatever. I didn't know anything. I still don't really know much <laughs> about it. I, you know, I didn't want to focus too much on um, any other. I, I really like to focus on what I, what's at hand. So let and me, then, let me just tell you this. So for all the fans of like myself out there of Heather's, right. I think what Heather means to a lot of, a lot of people is it was a movie that broke this new mold and ushered in movies like Jawbreaker, like Mean Girls, right. like Clueless. Yes. Like those movies where you have strong female characters doing bad shit. Right, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. In high exactly. school, right? Yeah. In high school, in early age. And, and, and a lot of those movies are kind of seminal. And that was a movie that, I mean, I, I, I'm hard pressed to think of anything that really came out beforehand that was that... I mean, it just was like, whoa, what is this? I think it was a right. shock for a lot of people, and it was just amazing. So, no pressure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, thanks. 
<laughs> it's it's really funny the the show I you know I didn't know anything about it and uh, when I was doing when I ha when the director gave me sheet music he sent me the sheet music for that and Big Fish and uh, I printed out all the sheet music kind of blindly I just saw the title of the song they wanted me to prepare to bring mm -hmm. back from Heather's mm -hmm. was called Blue mm -hmm. and I was like huh well I have to ask. Because it's Heather's. Is it B-L-U-E or B-L-E-U? No, it's E-W. It's B-L... It's B-L-U-E. Okay. It was, <laughs> and it was just... It was just called Blue. And, um, you know, when when I... If I don't know the music, I just kind of find it online if I can on YouTube or whatever. And I'll play the song and I'll print out the sheet music. And uh, I'll, like, just kind of start reading along the lyrics and seeing what... You know, just getting a basic gist of the song. And if there's any problem spots, I'll go to the piano and I'll plunk out the melody or whatever I need to help myself with. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I really, I kind of wish I looked at the lyrics first, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm shacked up with my grandma right now, and she's home, I, I'm blasting music, you know, and she likes to listen, so. Well, she's your number one fan. Yeah, of course, and so I'm like, I'm looking at this sheet music, and I start playing it, and it just starts going in, it's all about blue balls. <laughs> And the whole song is a duet with another guy. It's like, you make my balls so blue. You hurt that, them badly. You make my ball. I'm like, oh that, my God. It was amazing. Yeah, it's like this sweet like R&B song kind of thing. And I was just like, oh my God. What did I get myself oh, into? Wow. This is hilarious. Oh, wow. so I've never seen the musical or anything. So I know that just is the movie, which is it's, song free. And so that's hilarious. It's, yeah, the whole plot is, I mean, I looked up the plot synopsis, of course. <laughs> and it's exactly like what you were describing in yeah. the movie. It's cool. Cool. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of that show. I play a high school jock. I'm like, so football excited. Player. You're you're gonna be part of the show. I'm so yeah. excited because I know I'm gonna get to go and see it and see you, and I'm just gonna be yeah. They, awesome. it's a good season, you know, for uh, for Slow Burn. I was really impressed with what they were putting out. Yeah. Is that, so Slow Burn is is what the name of the production it's a, company? It's is the... it's a production company, a theater company that works mm -hmm. um, with Broward Center of the Performing Arts. So they perform okay. at Broward Center. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Oh my gosh. So, <clears throat> um, I wanted to ask you as we kind of start to wrap up, mm -hmm. um, as you're preparing for Big Fish, um, as you have, you have landed this role, you're, you're, memor you're memorized your lines very well so far, you know, you've gotten almost, what are you fearful of? Are you feel fearful of anything? Are you nervous about anything? Yeah, um, actually, I don't, I don't get nervous that much. Um, I use, I, pretty good at using my nerves, towards um, my performance. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Fish is, it's the biggest, it's the biggest role. Like as I said earlier, the biggest yeah. professional role that I've been handed, yeah. and especially by a theater that doesn't know me. Um, I'm, I'm nervous. I want to do a good job. Mm -hmm. I want them to, gladly welcome me back for Heather's, and then hopefully, you know. Um, give me opportunities in the future with that theater and mm -hmm. you know it other other theater companies come and see the shows at slow burn it's you know it's right now it's ranked one of the top 10 South Florida shows to come and see That's big fish amazing. so I'm nervous you know it's um but it's okay I'm yeah. really excited about it I know it's gonna be an awesome production um, they've got a, a really good um, handle on things so far I've seen some of the costumes I've seen mm -hmm. the show it's very exciting it's a little overwhelming, but, um, you know, I just think of the guy playing my father, and as I'm listening to the show, every song he's in, and wow. and when I look at my script, I'm looking at him, and he's on stage a lot more than me, so I'm just thinking, if he can do it, no problem. Have you had I a chance it. to talk to him much about um, the roles? I, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I'm really excited to meet him, and, you know, I can I can tell that we'll probably be spending a lot of time, mm -hmm. but, like, off off uh, rehearsal mm -hmm. together, you mm -hmm. know, getting to know each other because mm -hmm. we are playing um, really close family roles. Yeah, which is important. You know, you want to have a good chemistry with the other people, especially if you're genuine. in a family or in a sort of relationship with that person. Of course, you know. And as a, my dying father in the show, I need to have a really good relationship with him. So I'm going to definitely right, right. be really interested in getting to know more about him. And uh, I, you know, he's worked with the theater and he seems pretty professional. So mm -hmm. I'm. I'm nervous, but I'm not worried in any yeah. sort of way that it's not going to go well or anything. Let me ask you a question. If you... What else have I been doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. 
That's why I came here. <laughs> I know. If uh, you could fast forward your life, let's say you're 65, and you are now taking a seat in the audience, but you are seeing the you, this you, going on stage for the first time. Hmm. What would you What would you say to this you? I would say, take a deep breath, kid. It's going to be all right. Ah. Because it, that's what I've done my entire life so far. Anytime um, I ever, like right before I go into an audition room, I always just kind of, you know, just center myself, take a deep breath, and just kind of let it out slow and be like, just, just another yeah. just another line, just yeah. another word, you know, that I got to say. Whatever, yeah. it's not, not a big deal. Yeah. And as long as I keep reminding myself that, then I can go in front of thousands of people. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're super polished on how to prepare yourself. You know yourself as a performer. So I think you're going to be, am- I know you're going to be amazing. I have full faith in you. So. Thank you. Yeah. Where can um, people find out information about the shows and when they're going to be coming up? And where can people go to get all that info? Yes. Yeah, so the show. Or your info or any of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, the show is, um, it's running October 22nd through November 8th mm-hmm. at the Big Broward Fish. Center. Yeah. Big Fish. Mm-hmm. And Heather's will be in June of okay. uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. So next, this coming June. Mm-hmm. Um, it runs Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday matinee. Mm-hmm. So four shows a week. You can get your tickets on the Broward Center of Performing Arts website. Mm-hmm. So go Google that or BrowardCenter.com or .org, I think is what it is. <laughs> I think and it is just .org. Look, I think um, so, yeah. look up Big Fish, and um, they give you the whole calendar and the list of ticket prices and everything like that. And um, it's worth the ticket for sure. So... Right on. You definitely. Yes. Yes. Go, 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 go see it. Go see it. Go see it, South Florida. It's do it. A great whoop show. Whoop. Great show. Do you want to sign off the podcast? It's super easy. Yeah, how do I do it? Just say, uh, I'm Justin Fox Hall, and this is with Curve the Cube, or this has been Curve the Cube. However you want to say it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, yeah, I'm Justin Fox Hall, and this has been Curve the Cube. <laughs> Yay! Whoop, whoop. High five! Right You're awesome, man. Thanks. So excited to get to talk to you. Me too. I just said we got to talk to you. Like I'm you more and than... your audience. <laughs> absolutely, that's how it rolls. That's how it works. You are amazing. Oh, that was a great podcast. That was fun. That Thank was you so fun. much for doing it. That of was course. Great. You have successfully curved the cube.